Okay, so our first winner on the list here is none other than rookie Jalen Hyatt, who the Giants came up. They they went picks ahead, right? They traded picks away to get this guy, this wide receiver from Tennessee. And everyone was wondering, why is this guy falling so much? Is it because he's fast but has no route running capabilities? Let's see if the New York Giants wide receiver proves them all wrong. So far in training camp, he's done just that. He's had very good speed, and that's been seen by our clips on NFL Rookie Watch. Uh, he's had fluidity and route running impressive, uh, or has been impressive as well. Multiple deep touchdowns thrown by Tyrod Taylor, Daniel Jones. There was even a day that high was with the first, the second, and the third team, so he's kind of been bouncing around throughout all of training camp. Uh, but the, the one, there's one point that remains uh, fluid throughout all of this, and that is Jalen Hyde has been impressive throughout the first part of training camp, and we put him down as a winner. I'm right, moving on to our next winner. We've got Daniel Jones. Um, you know, kind of a, a boring one, I guess you can say, but he's been impressive throughout camp. He's been accurate. He's been consistent pretty much every day of camp. Uh, you're seeing a stat line like Daniel Jones, 16 of 19, Daniel Jones, 20 of 24, Daniel Jones, 11 of 15, uh, you know, pretty much there, thereabouts above 75% completion percentage almost every single day. Uh, so he's been really good, really consistent. He's been finding his receivers, his new weapons, his old weapons. Um, just everything has been very good from Jones and then his deep ball accuracy. We just talked about the deep balls to Hyatt. Uh, he's had deep balls to Slayton, deep balls to Waller, even the ones that aren't completed, uh, his throws are pretty much on the money. So, uh, a really good week and a half of training camp, uh, for Daniel Jones. And I think he's been impressive. Yeah, he's really shown off. Uh, I think also he's been targeting Paris Campbell as well too deep that I wanted to mention there. One more guy yeah, that you can think about. Yeah, I forgot about him. So, um, yeah, new additions, like you said, and old friends as well. We move on to our next winner, and that's an offensive lineman, Ben Bredesen, who has basically solidified himself as a starting guard, whether that's on the left side or the right side. Um, and he's had impressive one-on-one -on -one reps every single time. He's just been really consistent, and that's what you want to see from your offensive lineman. So it's not only Andrew Thomas that's been standing out, although Andrew Thomas has been standing out. <laughs> um, we had the clip the other day that, uh, that you know, Talking to Iron 3 posted and, and we saw and I live tweeted when I was there at training camp on the last day that uh, not only did Andrew Thomas win a rep against uh, Kayvon Thibodeau, but he shoved him to the ground too right after the rep. Ben Bredesen has, no, he hasn't had the highlight videos that you're seeing on Twitter of him absolutely throwing someone and shoving them to the ground, but there has been videos of him just not letting defensive linemen go past him. And that's what an offensive lineman should do. So he's had a very good uh, first week plus of training camp. And we'll see if that continues uh, throughout the preseason. But yeah, Ben Bredesen definitely has been a winner and a guy that has stood out on this offensive line for just his like really good consistency. Andrew Thomas is a constant winner. I don't even have him on this list. We don't even have him on this list because he just wins constantly. There's no, there's no losing with Andrew Thomas, but I were, you know, he's, he's always a winner. So yeah, I mean, throw him in there. Why not? Um, our next player here is Trey Hawkins, pretty much the star of camp. Actually, uh, he started camp on the third team and then he ended camp on the first team. I think that's pretty much all you need to say, uh, went from the third team, not to the second team to a starter on the first team in the last couple of days, his size, his speed, his awareness, really impressive for a late round selection. He was six round selection by the giants this past year's draft. Um, he's just been solid. He's been covering everyone whether it's high deep uh, with his blistering speed, more seasoned receivers like Hodgins or Paris Campbell or even Darius Slayton. He's just been really, really impressive. Um, and I, no one, I think, saw this coming in terms of how good he, he's been so far. I do remember a few people. I'm, I don't remember who, so I can't give out the shout outs, but there were certainly a couple people who were high on him coming out of the draft uh, in terms of you know when the Giants drafted him. They're like, this guy could make the roster type thing. You know, this guy could get snaps, but I don't think anyone uh, saw him being so good that he pushed a Dory Jackson into the slot. But there were other reasons for that as well, which we'll talk about in the losers section uh, for sure. Yeah, Alex. I mean, Hawkins, there's people on Twitter right now saying to the Giants get the seal of the draft or the Giants get a gem in the rough, right? Is this going to is this going to be what we think it is? And mind you, he's only playing against Giants offense, right? He's only playing against one NFL team and it's his own. How is that going to look in the joint practices against the Lions? How is it going to look in the preseason game? And that's going to be something we talk about 
you know, not to plug or anything, but in our preview to the Lions Giants preseason game, that's going to be coming out probably sometime later this week. Well, it will be coming out sometime later this week, whether it's a podcast podcast episode or a YouTube video. Uh, but you know, when we talk about guys who are looking forward to watching in that game, Trey Hawkins is going to be one of them. How does he fare against other opponents? Not in college, right? That's all we've seen against the Giants, but against the Giants, He's been absolutely phenomenal and a fun guy to watch. There's been the talks about the PI, you know, holding defenders. I just think that's part of the game, man. I mean, we'll see again in the preseason game how he gets called. If there's a lot of pass uh, uh, PI calls, you know, with the tugging, he t- he likes to tug the shirt. He's definitely of- handsy. He's definitely handsy. He's definitely sure. handsy, but I just think that's part of the game. However, we'll have to see how he faces against not New York Giants training camp practice refs, right? Um, our next winner here is. Who, what he should be a winner and what he's paid to be a winner for is the top paid tight end in the NFL, Darren Waller, the new addition for this team and for the Giants offense and for Daniel Jones, who that has been his favorite target throughout live drills with 19 catches. He's very smooth. He just operates at a different level on the field. Maybe it's because of his height mixed with his size, like built wise and mixed with his speed, but he's just like an all around package. You know, people have been calling him a unicorn because that just looks, that's just what he is. I mean, he won practically every rep during training camp, whether it's those shallow crossers, whether it's the, the cuts right into the middle of the field. We haven't re- really seen many deep looks for Waller because he doesn't need to get open deep. He just does literally a slant in cut to the left side or to the right side, depending on which side of the field he's on. And you'll find him in the middle. He's been beating linebackers. He's been beating safeties. He's been beating cornerbacks. No one can cover him. It's actually, it looks like it's impossible to cover him. And well, again, we'll have to see if that changes during preseason or uh, during the regular season. If the Giants play him during the preseason, we'll see. Uh, But just Waller has been fun to watch because he just always gets open. No one has been able to cover him. And that has been the main takeaway uh, for the tight end. And moving on to another Giants uh, weapon addition, Paris Campbell coming over from the Colts. He's been impressive. He's had good route running, good hands, stuff you've expected from him uh, based on last season. His connections with Jones have been strong already. Uh, he, you know, He's talked about that in press conferences, how he feels like that relationship's building really quickly. He had the fourth most catches uh, this training camp in live drills with 12. I just overall, he missed a couple days too. So that's something to note, right? He missed, I believe, two days of practice. And uh, he still was the fourth uh, you know, favorite target of Daniel Jones. So I, I enjoyed watching him at camp. I thought he was impressive, even in individual drills, just with the wide receiver. He seems so quick, uh, agile, uh, a really good start to camp uh, and start to his Giants career uh, for Paris Campbell. Next up on the list, we go back to defense safety. Jason Pinnock solidified himself as a starter next to Xavier McKinney. And he also had that crazy one-handed interception to end. I forget which day it was, but it was to end one of the practices, I think last week, and maybe it was four or five. Uh, that was on the Giants Twitter. If you wanted to, you could check that out. But it was absolutely insane uh, for him to get up there and not only get up there, but make that completely one-handed catch. So Pinnock has just been consistent again. Another guy that has just been slotted into the first team, and he has just done really well in that spot. Yeah. Um, moving on now to Darius Slayton. Um, he has been great as well. I think kind of overshadowed uh, by Waller and Campbell and even Saquon for that matter, but he's kept up with those guys uh, with the third most catches with 14. He's had 14 catches in live drills. He's had a whole bunch of impressive deep catches. Um, You know, he's been working with the first team. He's been working with the second team, uh, mostly the first team. He's started pretty much every, he has started every single practice. So, uh, you know, he's been keeping up. Uh, He got that new contract, obviously, which he worked hard for uh, this past regular season. And uh, it doesn't seem like he's slowing down in that connection with Jones. I feel like is always going to be there. Uh, after they came into the league together in 2019. Next up here, we have another wide receiver, Colin Johnson, who came back from the pup list and immediately made an impact on the second team, which is what he's been sticking with so far with Tyrod Taylor. We'll see if that changes and how he plays again in the preseason game against the Lions next week, But uh, or I guess this week. But he's just been impressive in the one-on-one drills and also during 11-11s and 7-on-7 uh, team drills with his contested catches. Uh, whether it's been along the sideline or in the middle of the field, Johnson's just been impressive. And this is a guy, though, that you look at the roster and you see if you can put the puzzle pieces together and fit Johnson in one of those 53. 
That's going to be the question that comes down to it between the, you know, Brian Dable, the head coach of the New York Giants, Mike Kakko, the offensive coordinator, and the entire front office. Does Johnson have a spot? So far, he's definitely proved it, right? He's done everything in his power to do it. It's a matter of the front office now to see if he can fit him in there. But yeah, Johnson's one of those names that, that has definitely stood out so far uh, in training camp. Uh, a late winner here, I think, really solidified his winner status on the last couple days of practice with the Evan Neal injury. Uh, Matt Parrott, he came in for Evan Neal uh, on that day. He got injured. He did a solid job, I felt, in live drills. And then the next day, um, he was the starter, obviously, with Evan Neal out, meaning that he is the clear swing tackle. Tyree Phillips has been playing a lot at guard. Corey Cunningham at guard, we've seen. So a lot of these guys uh, who are kind of the competition at that swing tackle spot have been shifting over to guard or have been behind Parrott in the depth chart. So Parrott came in. He did pretty good in one-on-one -on -one drills. Uh, we saw him against Zimenez. We saw him against uh, Thibodeau even, who he didn't uh, – I thought it was a pretty even matchup. So overall, Matt Parrott's been pretty good this offseason um, and at training camp, and I think he's been impressive, and he's solidified himself as the starting guard at this point – or starting uh, swing tackle, excuse me, at this point in time. Obviously, more competition could be brought in at that spot, one of the weaker spots on the roster for sure. But, uh, you know, with his performances, I think he's kind of assuring the Giants that he could do a job at that spot. Okay, and our final winner here of training camp, Open Training Camp 2023, he's on the defensive side of the ball. It's Micah McFadden, started camp second fiddle to last year's training camp standout, Darian Beavers. But by the end of camp, he was getting the majority of starting reps. Him and Beavers throughout basically the entire camp on 50-50. However, McFadden pulled ahead right there at the end uh, of camp. It's going to be interesting how the Giants kind of use both of those weapons, especially since they're both young. They both have a lot of um, energy, I guess you could say, or you would, you would hope that they have uh, a lot. I'm, what, what am I trying to think of? Like the word... Um, like that they use in FIFA for the players, uh, not energy, but like um, not pace either. But you know what I mean. I have no like, idea. I have no, no idea, idea what, what I'm trying to say. Athleticism. Well, what, sure, uh, stuff like that. Acceleration. What I'm, trying to, say is, what I'm trying to say is they won't get tired because they're younger. Stamina. To go out. Thank you. And you um, they use that in FIFA. I'm not wrong. They do. They use that in every game, actually. Madden, 2K. That is true. So – what I'm thinking is I'm, I'm interested to see how the Giants split the rest between those guys in the regular season. But I'm going to stop talking about McFadden now because I'm having trouble finding words. So we're going to go to the losers, unfortunately. And I hate calling these guys losers, by the way, too. It always sucks. But they, it, it is, it is it for is reasons is. that are – yeah, it's for reasons that are obvious because they just had trouble during, during camp, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, our first loser here is Darnay Holmes. Um, I think probably everyone has him on their list. Um, despite being first out on the practice field literally every single day, so props to him, um, he definitely struggled to keep up with pretty much every receiver he faced. He seemed lost in the slot. It was like he was a completely different player uh, in camp so far than we've seen from him in the past uh, and definitely really, really struggled in the slot. So unfortunate to see, but hopefully he picks it up now uh, with the rest of the off season before cutdowns and, you know, best of luck to him, obviously going forward. Yeah. Unfortunately, we have another cornerback on this list and that's Cordell Flott with Darnay Holmes struggling. Flott didn't really step up at all to fill his void whatsoever. Uh, Adoree Jackson ended up moving to the slot actually due to the poor performance of both the nickel cornerbacks. We're going to have to see how this goes again throughout training camp. Cordell Flott, Darnay Holmes. Uh, we hope they set up their game. We hope they do better. If not, though, we, so far. <laughs> if, uh, if not, though, we do have Trey Hawkins. That That is the one exciting piece that we do have. Now, I'm not saying that two wrongs make a right, uh, but I am saying that there is a little bit of upside when it comes to the defensive backs to look forward to. So that's, that's at least something uh, that's bright. There you go. Um, moving now to the offense, we've got Tyrod Taylor. Uh, I wouldn't say he's a huge loser here. Um, he was oddly inaccurate at times throughout camp uh, especially the deep ball it felt like he was really inaccurate um, he had good command of the offense that's for sure uh, with the second unit but it seemed like at times when you're expecting more accuracy uh, more precision from a veteran quarterback like Taylor he just didn't really step up uh, you know in that regard so uh, a little bit disappointing there from Tyrod Taylor 
another offensive player here, Mark Lewinsky, who lost his starting job, maybe. Uh, he also struggled during live drills and one-on-ones, but the offensive uh, – well, you would, you would think here, let's just say this, right? Lewinsky's got a big deal, so it's not like the Giants are going to cut him. But – he very well could have lost um, his role as a starting offensive lineman. He's a good player to come off the bench if we really need him. And he could rotate throughout this offensive line as well throughout the season. It's just something to definitely note that during one on, or not one on ones, during uh, live drills or uh, team drills, I should say, seven on seven or more, 11 on 11, uh, Kalinsky was out there less uh, than last offseason. So something to note. Or that, yeah, last training camp. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, str- struggled for sure on the offensive line. We saw Bredesen come in for him. We saw Zudu come in for him. So, uh, definitely something to keep an eye out, uh, for, you know, throughout the rest of the off season. Like you said, Josh, he's not going to get cut, but, um, maybe he is not the starter come week one, like many expected he would be. Um, our next loser is Isaiah Hodgins. Um, again, not really a loser, just someone who didn't keep up with the pack. If that makes any sense, Paris Campbell, Darren Waller, Saquon Barkley, um, Slayton, all these weapons for Daniel Jones. It just seemed like Hodgins was very much on the uh, you know back burner compared to those guys. Um, so it's not as much that he had a bad camp or was doing anything wrong per se, but it's just that he only had eight catches throughout camp, yet he was a starter every single day. He was there every single day, pretty much got every single first team rep. But Daniel Jones just wasn't really looking his way uh, when it came down to red zone uh, you know, red zone snaps or just literally any snap. He would be looking Darren Waller, Paris Campbell, Darius Slayton first, Saquon Barkley, even out of the backfield, Daniel Bellinger. Uh, it just seemed like Hodgins was really on the back burner throughout this first week and a half of open training camp. So hopefully he gets back on track. Um, you know, when he was called upon, he was solid. Don't get me wrong. So, um, more to do, not with his performance, but how he is keeping up with everyone else in his position. And our final loser here on the defensive side of the ball, cornerback Amani Oruarie. Uh, He failed to keep up with rookie Trey Hawkins and found himself stuck on the second or third team throughout camp. Now this guy was a standout for the Detroit Lions a couple of seasons ago. However, that was a couple of seasons ago. Last season, I think he struggled with an injury and he wasn't as good when he did play, leading him to get benched. I mean, simple as that. So... We'll have to see if he makes the team for the Giants. It was an off-season signing this year. I don't know how much he got paid, if it's like a contract worthy that he'll make the 53-man, and it's a it's a definite, but I do think um, it, it his fate could be up in the air. Uh, we'll have to see. But again, like I said, his season a couple seasons ago was completely like out of nowhere, and it was a sight to be seen. He was very good. Uh, I don't know if it's on a downward spiral. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, but that does it for our New York Giants 2023 Open Training Camp winners and losers.